Hotep, my good brother, alludes to some of those things in the introduction. <coughs> African people is the world's original people. You know that humanity originated in Africa. What we call today black skinned people uh, with broad Africoid features and spiral hair originating somewhere in East Central Africa perhaps 300,000 years ago, <coughs> spread to the rest of the continent of Africa, and then went out to people the rest of the world itself. So that all the aboriginal populations of the world, whether they be in America, in Europe, in Africa itself, in Asia, in Australia, are of black and African origin. And those migrations, those what we might call primordial migrations of African people continue to occur throughout what we call antiquity. So for tens of thousands of years, black people poured into the rest of the world. And what happened was they got into some parts of the world like Europe and they literally mutated. So that's the first process. The second one, of course, is the role of African people in classical civilizations. Not only are African people the first people on the planet, and in all humanity, all other forms of humanity diverge from Africa. In other words, I'm saying that there's only one race of people, and that is the human race, in which the black type is the oldest and most original. You've got to be comfortable with that. Yes. Be comfortable with your mother and father. Right? Yes. But not only that, black people went out people the rest of the world, and we know there's abundant evidence to show that African people molded, shaped, fashion, influence, form, created, sustained many of the world's oldest civilizations, not only in Africa itself, including the mighty, mighty Nile Valley civilization, but the same thing could be said for Europe, for America, for Asia. Tonight, we are talking about that other African, not the stereotypical African that ran through the jungles in the Hollywood movie throwing a spear. Not the African whose history begins with Chicken George, but the African whose history begins as mother and father of the entire human species, and the African whose history begins not as slave, but as master in control of his and her own destiny. That's the second component of the African presence in world history. And number three, as dreary as it can be sometimes, uh, we have to re-examine the slave experience. Most of the time, we would tend to think, and I know I'm speaking generally, that our history begins with slavery, that our history does, in fact, begin with Chicken George. Now, I thought that for a long time. And the thing that really made me want to pursue antiquity more than anything else, and probably what saved my life, in a sense, is learning that African people did not go to the far corners of the earth with shackles and chains in their hands and their feet. That was mind-blowing for me. Because I had grown up with slavery, at least with a certain concept of slavery. I had grown up with the rape and conquest of Africa, and it just about made me go crazy. I had to look at another time in history, before crack, before AIDS, before Ebola, before epidemics of teenage pregnancy, before tuberculosis, before one out of every three African men between the ages of 19 and 29 was in the criminal justice system. You know, that um, new statistic was announced the same day as the O.J. Simpson verdict. Five years ago, it was one out of every four African men between the ages of 19 and 29 was on probation, in jail, or on parole. Now it's one out of every three. The U.S. prison population is almost two million people. That's more than some countries. There are more black men in prison than are in college. From antiquity to modern times. Thank you. 
Thank you. 